Insertion of Recombinant DNA In this module, you will learn about the insertion of recombinant DNA into the host and obtaining a foreign gene product. We have already learned how the gene of interest can be amplified using polymerase chain reaction. Now once the gene of interest is amplified, it is ligated with a vector. This in turn is inserted into a host cell for further cloning. Many different techniques can be used to introduce the ligated DNA into the recipient cell. Now once the ligated DNA is introduced into the host cell, the host organism becomes genetically modified. As a result, the behavior of the host organism changes. Let us understand this with the help of an example. For this, let us take an RDNA-bearing gene which is resistant to ampicillin and insert it in the E. coli cells. On doing so, the E. coli cells become resistant to ampicillin. When they are transferred to a culture plate that contains ampicillin, only the E. coli cells that are resistant to ampicillin will grow. We can easily use this method to identify which cells are recombinant. The gene that helps in this easy identification of recombinant cells is called a selectable marker. Now, once the gene is inserted in the host cell, it starts expressing itself in the host cell to synthesize the desired protein. Such proteins that are formed from a recombinant DNA are called recombinant proteins. The cells with recombinant DNA can either be grown on a small scale in a laboratory or can be multiplied on a large scale in a continuous culture. In this case, used medium is drained from one side and fresh medium is added from the other side continuously. To produce large quantities of desired cell, Large vessels are used to process large volumes of cultures to produce specific products. These large vessels are called bioreactors. A bioreactor provides the optimal conditions for achieving the desired product. The commonly used bioreactor is a stirred tank reactor. Let us look at the construction of this reactor. A stirred tank reactor is usually cylindrical with a curved base. The curved base helps in the mixing of the reactor contents. The stirrer helps in mixing the contents as well as in providing the needed oxygen. The reactor consists of an agitator system to mix the contents, an oxygen delivery system to supply oxygen, a foam control system, a temperature control system, a pH control system and a sampling port to withdraw the product periodically. Once the bioreactor has produced enough product, it is collected from the bioreactor for separation and purification. This collection of the product followed by its separation and purification is called the downstream processing. Let's recap. Different techniques can be used to introduce the ligated DNA into the recipient cell. The gene that helps in the easy identification of recombinant cells is called a selectable marker. The proteins that are formed from a recombinant DNA are called recombinant proteins. Large vessels used to process large volumes of culture to produce specific products are called bioreactors.